Hey everyone, this is me Rachid and welcome to yet another video. Today I want to talk about my Flipkart interview experience journey. So I was in IIT Rudki in the year of 2015. Um, Flipkart visited our campus for hiring interns and the third year has just begun and I was able to crack the interviews and finally I was doing internship in Flipkart in 2016 after my third year was ended and the interview spanned across two months in Bangalore office and when Flipkart visited the campus for hiring interns they were open to students who were in computer science electrical engineering and they were also open to students who were in the coding groups of our college like uh, we have two SDS labs and IMG so they were also open to the students of that I think it's it's good for students who are from branches like metallurgy or mechanical and uh, they want to get into software engineering so that's a good chance I think anyways guys um, so Back in 2016, Flipkart was paying around 50,000 Indian rupees. Just to give you a comparison with the other players in the market, we had Amazon who was paying 35,000 and Microsoft was paying 30,000 plus they were also giving a hotel stay. Uh, of course, these numbers have shoot up right now, like Microsoft is paying, I think, 80,000, something like that. I'm not sure. But these numbers have like skyrocketed post from 2016. But yeah, these were the numbers back in 2016 and I think Flipkart was doing a good job. Uh, the first round was an online coding test. It was a hacker rank link and I think we were around 200 students maybe or 300 and there were four questions. We were supposed to answer that in two hours and they were about dynamic programming, trees, greedy and C++ STL. Since I was doing competitive programming for a long while now, uh, it really helped me, you know, uh, to crack those interviews or the questions in a fairly short amount of time and uh, the C++ STL is something which quite a lot of students miss because while they were preparing for coding interviews they were also they were always focusing on data structures and algorithms but essentially you need to be really proficient with C++ STL because the usage of sets vectors maps with lower bounds and upper bounds is something which generates a lot of greedy problems as well to uh, solve them in n log n time complexity instead of n square. So C++ STL is something which you should not ignore because this is going to be there in coding interviews, I think. And uh, for Java users, it's I'm talking about the collections, okay? The hash set and all those things. So uh, I do have a video on C++ STL. Uh, it's around, I think, one hour of content. So uh, I will link the, uh, I will have the video links in the description. So be sure to check that out. But yeah, the, uh, after cracking these four questions, there was the round two about the in-person interview, which lasted for, I think, 90 minutes or something. And in those time span, uh, I was asked around three questions. And uh, let's let's hear what the questions are. So this is how the interview began. Like the he asked me, what is your favorite data structure? I said segment trees because I was pretty much confident with it. But uh, then he said, what do you think about graph theory? And I said, it's hard. So let that be it. And I don't know why this works, but guys, yeah, that's that's how it happened. And then he told me that there is this maze and you are lying in some cell and you have to reach to the gold uh, in minimum possible steps. And you have to tell me in how many minimum possible number of moves you can reach gold. In this case, uh, the path that I have traced out is having four steps, like right, down, down and down. Um, the thing over here is that you just can't move in any direction in the maze. Um, each cell is having a narrow direction which signifies the direction in which you can move from that particular cell. So in one second you have the option to move from cell X to cell Y if it's a valid possible move and that twist is you also have a magic remote button which you can press so you will stay at whatever cell you are at but the configuration of the maze will rotate. So all the arrows will rotate in clockwise direction. So the right sign becomes down, the down becomes left, and if they were left, they will become up and so on. on. So at one second, uh, we either have the choice of moving from cell X to cell Y, if it's a valid move, or we can rotate the matrix, I mean the configuration. And now uh, uh, the question becomes a bit difficult. And initially we could have use the BFS traversal just to reach to the golden minimum possible steps. But now we also have these rotations coming in and the question gets complex. But still the way uh, I would say the graph is unweighted and we can still use BFS. It's just that we create four layers of the maze in all possible four configurations. And then so basically this is something which I learned from computer programming. And had I not been doing computer programming for a while now, I would have surely not been able to crack this. 
and i don't know why such questions are asked i mean i think these questions are judging the exposure a candidate has towards pro uh, computer programming but of course i think they can still check out how they are uh, approaching the problem and things like that but i do feel that if uh the question was something which is something um a lot of people can crack just by having those analytical skills or logical skills that might be a good candidate for the interview problem but anyways i was able to crack this up and write the code as well and then we move to the second question on trees it was kind of similar to a github story so initially you are at state 0 then i will say that maybe uh check out to state 1 so now a state 1 is created which is checked out from state 0 now if i say check out a new state so your current state is 1 so state 2 is created from 1 and then so on so let's say we have created 10 states uh, in the fashion of first 0 then 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 9 so now i can say now you are at current state is 9 and i will say roll back to four states from your present state which means from state 9 you go four steps back you reach to step uh, state 5 and then I can say now check out uh, a new state from here. So the 10th state which is created, it's not checked out from 9, but it's checked out from 5. And then I can say uh, go back or roll back to 3 more states. So from 10, if you roll back to 1, you will reach uh, 5. Then you do one more roll back, you reach 4. Then one more, you reach 3. So from 10, checking back uh, or rolling back 3 states result in the state 3 and uh, the questions were like this like there was this tree diagram that was created and then there were queries about what is the fourth state from the state x or uh, roll back to 10 steps back or 10 states back and then check out a new state so these were the kind of queries and questions that i was asked and uh, again i was able to answer this using trees and i do feel that um, the strong experience that i had in trees and data structures and graph theory did really help me uh, not lose my confidence because these are questions which i am hearing for the first time and uh, having some similar experience uh, in in your past really helps a lot in cracking these questions so yeah uh, i think computer programming really helps a lot so the next question was on linked list and I really don't remember the question but it was fairly easy I think if you are good with C++ uh, you're good to go over here like if you are really proficient in writing code you won't have any issues in writing code for linked list and other questions related to it so yeah guys this was my intern internship interview experience with Flipkart um, and looking back I do feel that the skills that I had developed with computer programming were the sole reason why I was able to crack this up. Of course, they had shortlisted from my resume as well, but there was no discussion at any point of time with the interviewer about the projects that I had done. It was a short interview covering just data structures and algorithm questions, and I was able to crack this up. So you might be tempted now to do data structures, algorithms, computer programming, but I do want to state over here is that developmental skills are also important, and let's hear why. So if you are in a good college, which might not be the case. Uh, companies are visiting to your campus. Microsoft is coming, Goldman Sachs is coming, everything is good. And you have a chance, You have, you, and let's say you are also qualified, like you are from computer science or something, so you are qualified. So at that point of time, maybe they ask data structures, algorithms, skills, and you are able to crack that up. But most likely it's not the case, and even if you're in good college, maybe you are not qualified because of your branch. So you need to apply offline and you need to have a good resume so that it gets shortlisted very easily and your gates are open now to crack those coding interviews. Otherwise you will get rejected and you will not even make to the coding interviews. Okay. So when you're in college, you have four years. Of course, while you are watching this video, maybe you are in first, uh, second year, third year and you have less time. So maybe you can still do a lot. Don't lose hope because I also started very late. Of course, not much late but yeah i started in second year and second semester basically fourth semester so it's quite possible within six months you can bring a transformation so if you still have time like really invest your skills wisely use your time and you can surely do a lot of things all right guys that's all i had for this video let me know in comments what you think about this and if you want more such videos subscribe to my channel and i'll see you next time